Tell us about what led you to study chaplaincy. So straight after year 12, uh, like a lot of kids, had no idea what I wanted to do. But I realised that I loved helping out in the local high school. I loved uh, doing breakfast clubs and that sort of thing. And I loved working with young people, doing that in kids' church and all sorts of things. So I thought, what is there that I can actually do? And chaplaincy, school chaplaincy, seemed like a really great option. So I jumped straight into that. Alpha Cruises had a course uh, within a few months uh, beginning, and I jumped straight into that, and that uh, really took it from there. Chaplain's role is really being on the front line to be able to step in to any need that is present. And so, I'm as, as a chaplain, I'm often asked, what do you do here? Because kids don't really know what a chaplain does. But I've just been able to say, well, I'm here to listen, I'm here to help, here yeah. to support. And the amount of times that just by being consistent, you're the person who a child or even a staff member comes to and wants to speak to. And this is relevant in every aspect of chaplaincy, whether you're in a hospital or prison or a school. If you're a chaplain there, you're just someone who is a neutral party who can be spoken to, who the person knows is going to be a, a listener, the person knows is going to listen to you. So uh, as part of the diploma, I had to do, I think, about 100 hours placement time. I had a mate who was actually a teacher at a school, and he uh, was able to talk to his principal. This is a public school, mind you. And uh, they were able to work out having a chaplain do their placement there um, was going to work for them, having an extra set of hands. They'd never had a chaplain. Still to this day, I'm, I'm the only chaplain that they've had. And it actually worked out really well. I was able to do a lot of the assignments that were part of the diploma on my placement at the public school and the principal was totally cool with that and it worked out really well. I remember being in one, one of the classes really early and the lecturer, I forget her name, but she, at the end of the class, she pulled me aside and said that she had kind of a word of knowledge for me and it was really profound what she had to say and actually, I still think about it to this day about three, four years after, and she was spot on about you know the way God was going to use my life. And I'm really grateful for that. So, as I graduated, I already had some opportunities with chaplaincy lined up. Okay. Already a few schools that I had done my placement in okay, that yeah. there was now like an open door to actually start doing some chaplaincy in there. So, started in a few schools and. Straight away, there was a lot of need there. Uh, that was going really well. And then within one year, uh, that I was needed to work five days a week because oh, wow. the need was there. Uh, we had funding from our church's community services and we were able to get me in there five days a week. It was a bit exhausting to begin with, but I really yeah. got the hang of it now. Look, first and foremost, you gotta have a love for people to do it without already loving people is just going to be like beating a dead horse. It's not going to be, yeah. it's, it's going to be impossible. We don't want a chaplain in, in, in the schools doing anything like what you've described. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And uh, you don't necessarily need to have already incredible charisma or anything like okay, that. Okay, okay. I know when I started chaplaincy, my mum only told me this recently, but she said, I thought you choosing chaplaincy was the worst idea. Oh, wow. Because I was quite a closed in quiet, reserved okay, kid, interesting, interesting. but as I moved into the schools, I really came out of my shell and really it's just about asking questions. you be, about, be, a, be a person who's a good listener okay. and I felt like I was a pretty good listener, so I was able to listen and, and uh, just tune in to the, the young people and that's kind of where it's all come from, mm. not because I was some really talented guy, but just because I was able to put myself aside for a little bit mm. and listen. And I think that's what you need. You just need a, a, some humility, to be able to listen, to be able to care, to be patient, mm. and uh, be present when needed. Well, one thing we've seen incredible success with in chaplaincy is a program we've called the Building Strong Men program. And we're doing it in a high school at the moment. And the principal has said that it is the greatest program she's ever seen in her school. And we've been doing that for a few years now and we want to continue it on. And I've become really passionate about boys' education because mm. I believe there's an incredible 
um, lack of good men in our society okay. and yeah. a lot of young boys that do not know what it means to be good men. They have no idea how to step into that. So this is what we want to bring forward and the program pretty much consists of having men, good men from the community yes. and bringing them to be part of the school community okay. and working alongside these young men who oftentimes have uh, uh, fathers who are absent yeah. or no fathers at all. Yeah. And so this program has seen some great success and I really want to pursue this and see whether we can bring this into uh, several schools, high schools, and really make a difference in those communities.